Now I have here two sets of data from some kind of a made up experiment. So first of all, which data looks better? I suspect you're probably going to say the data on the right. So what we have is a series of data. What we can then put in is a trend line. So we're going to draw our line of best fit. Now I'm going to use, I'm going to sort of cheat a bit. I've got one of these uh, line of best fit rulers. Uh, the link below, because I think they're you know, just quite a cool little thing. Um, and basically, if I put it over here, I'm not quite sure where that line of best fit should go. There should be a fairly even number of points above and below the line. And I'm going to say, well, actually, in this case, it looks a bit like that. OK, so that's my line of best fit. Over here, it's easier, in a way, to actually kind of work out where the line of best fit is. And I'm going to put it in like that. So basically, what my blue line is, is my line of best fit. And I'm just going to shorten that to L-O-B-F, uh, or lob off. OK, so this is my line of best fit that kind of goes through the data. So what we can see here is that there's very little scatter of data here, and therefore it's quite reliable data. This one here, I'm a bit more uncertain about. But what we can do is we can actually quantify that uncertainty. Because what we, what we can also do is add what we call a worst acceptable line of best fit. And so when I look at uh, the data here, there's sort of so many possible combinations where I could maybe put that line. And this is something which is still a line of best fit, but it's kind of what's the worst that you could get away with. And perhaps maybe, I don't know, it sort of looks something a bit like that. OK, there's no definite uh, sort of maximum. So maybe this one here still got points above and below the line. This one here, if I put in my worst acceptable line of best fit, there's much less possibility. So maybe this one here has a line that looks maybe a bit like that. And what you can now see is that these two, the gradients of these two lines are, are much more different than the gradients of these two lines. And I'm going to call this one here the W-A-L-O-B-F, or the Willoboff, which is not a proper scientific term. Uh, it's made up by me. So basically, we've got the Loboff and the Willoboff. Both of these are lines best fit, but this is what we call the worst acceptable. Now, basically, what we can do is we can look at the gradient for both of these lines. So perhaps over here, we find that the gradient of the line of best fit is perhaps you know, 0.5. And again, it's 0.5 over here. So we have the same number. What we can then do is we can work out the gradient, you know, doing it properly, drawing a big triangle, working it out correctly. Maybe we find that the value of the worst acceptable line of best fit is a value of 0.6 for this one. Whereas over here, it's got a value of 0.55. So what we can do now is we can actually start to quantify the amount of uncertainty in the data. Effectively, the bigger or the bigger the difference between these two gradients, the more uncertain we are about uh, the actual value here. And this is where we use the equation for the percentage uncertainty in the gradient. And here we have the equation. Basically, the percentage uncertainty in the gradient is equal to the gradient of the lob off minus the gradient of the wall off over the gradient of the lob off multiplied by 100. So what that means is basically the bigger the difference in these gradients, the greater the uncertainty in that line. Now, if we look at this one here, uh, the difference between these two things, and really we often just talk about effectively the, um, you know, we don't really want to necessarily know if it's positive or negative. We just want to know the size of that, that difference. Uh, in this case, the difference between the two is equal to 0 0.1. We divide that by what it should be, which is 0 0.5. We multiply it by 100. And then we get a percentage uncertainty here of 20% in our gradient. Here, the value is going to be 0 0.05, which is the difference between the two, over 0 0.5 times 100. And here, the difference is 10%. So what we've now done is we've kind of started to quantify, you know, with some kind of number, how much scatter there is on this graph. Basically, the more scattered the data, the less reliable and the less certain we are about that, and therefore it has a greater uncertainty, which we can give as our percentage uncertainty in the gradient. So I hope that helps. It's something which is in the specification for AS physics and as, as well as A2, and it's something that they might give you a graph like this and maybe ask you to work out the percentage uncertainty in the gradient. If you know what to do, use this equation here, which isn't in the data book, uh, then you can find the percentage uncertainty in that line. So I hope that helps, and uh, good luck. Thank you.